Hello everyone. In the previous video, we have discussed about the bubble sort algorithm and we have discussed this particular example, right? So we have sort so we have applied the bubble sort algorithm on this particular example and we got the sorted list after the third pass, right? Right? Now let us try to understand this particular algorithm using Python. So this Python code is given to us, and here you can see one function. We have defined a function that is bubble underscore sort, and this is taking array as an input now what this code is doing n equals to length of array length of array means number of element in the array number of elements so here array is one dimension array that is basically list also so number of element in the list now for i in range n when i say for i in range n n is basically this one now for j in range 0 comma n minus i minus 1 then we have outer for loop, we have inner for loop and what we are checking if the element at j position is greater than the element at, is greater than the element at j plus 1 position, right. So same thing, whatever we have discussed in the previous video, right. So element at j position, for example, 64 is greater than the adjacent element that is basically j plus 1 position. If this is greater, then we have to swap the element. Same thing we have checked here also, right the 34 is greater than 12 or not if 34 is greater than 12 then we are swapping the element right now same thing is applied here also if the element at j position is greater than the element at j plus 1 position that is basically adjacent element then we are swapping them right otherwise we are going for the next iteration so this is how this particular bubble sort algorithm is working now let's try to discuss one example so here i have an array having this particular element and here we are calling the function and taking this array as an input now what is the value of n here that is number of element in the array 1 2 3 4 5 so here n equals to 5 right for i in range n n means 5 range of 5 means it will iterate from 0 to 4 not 5 because it is n minus 1 so when I, so whenever i say range n so it will iterate from 0 to 4 not 5 okay now for j in range 0 comma n minus i so value of i for the first iteration is basically 0 and the n is 5 so 5 minus 0 minus 1 is basically 4 so range 0 comma 4 will iterate from 0 to 3 not 4 because n minus 1 is there right so 0 comma 4 will iterate from 0 to 3 so this particular for loop will iterate from 0 to third element right now what we are doing if the element at 0th position because for the first iteration the value of j is 0 here if the element at 0th position is greater than the element at 0 plus 1, that is, that is basically first position. So, 0th position is this one, first is this one. So, 64 is greater than 34. Yes, it is. If this condition is true, then we are swapping this, right? Then we are swapping the element. So, after the first iteration, this will be 64 and this will be 34, right? Then we are going for a next iteration. Now, in this case, the value of j is basically 1, right? So, again, we are checking if the element at first position is greater than the element at j plus 1 that is basically second position so again we need to check first position is 64 64 is greater than 25 yes that is true then again we are going to swap it so here it will be 25 and this will be 64 again for the next iteration the value of j will be what 2 here now the element at second position is greater than the third position because j plus 1 is 3 right now let's see Yes, same thing, 64 is greater than 12. So again, we have to swap this, right? So in this way, after the first iteration, after going through all the iteration, I will get this list like this, 34, 25, 12, 22, 64. So this is what we got during the first pass. Whenever I say first pass, it means for the outer for loop, when i equals to 0, it is basically when i equals to 0, we got this particular list. Now, at the last element, what will happen? We have completed the iteration for this for loop. Then we go for a, this outer for loop. Now, in this case, the value of i will be 1. Again, this particular j will iterate from 0 to n minus i minus 1. n is 5. i is in this case is 1 minus 1. That is basically a 3. Right? So, 0, 3 means 0 to 2 in this case. Again, we are checking if for the first iteration, the value of j is 0. Now we have to take this as an input because this particular list got updated to this one after the first iteration, right? So again, we are checking whether the value of 0th position is greater than 0 plus 1, that is first position. 
Yes, that is true, right? So again, we are going to swap this in this way. So 25, 34 like this. So in this way, this particular code is working. I hope you understand this working of this particular code. Try to com complete this particular uh, code by using this example. At the last, you will get this particular list only, right? If I keep iterating when the value of i is 1 and when the value of i is 2. So when the value of i is 2, that is basically a third pass. So we'll got this particular sorted list here, right? So if you see, after third pass, I got the sorted list. That is basically uh, 12, 22, 25, 34, 64, right? So we got the sorted list after second pass only. So this is simple algorithm of bubble sort, right? I hope you understand this particular uh, code. Nothing in it. We are simply checking this particular condition for all the elements, right? Now, what will happen in the next pass? Suppose when the value of i is equal to 3. So, here the value of i is become 3 because we are iterating from 0 to 4. Now, in this case, what will happen? This range will become 0, 5 minus 3 minus 1. That is basically 0, 1. So, it will go through 0 only for the first iteration only because 1 here is n. So, n minus 1 and iteration, right? So, 0 to 0 is basically only one time. So, when the value of 0 is only 1. So, it is checking. No, that is not true. Then that's it, right? We got the same list, right? Even if you go for the next iteration, then the value of i is 4. So, what will happen? 5 minus 4 minus 1 is what? 0 only, right? So, it will stop iterating uh, toward this inner for loop, right? So, this is how this particular bubble sort algorithm works. And one important point to note here, we have discussed this particular list. What if the list is like this? So, instead of this particular example, Let's try this one. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if I just try this particular thing, what is going to happen now? Let's see. Now, see, if I take this particular array as an input, what will happen? Here, the value of n is still 5 because 5 elements are there. For the first iteration, the value of i is basically 0. Now, j in range 0 to 5 minus 0, that is basically 4, right? So, it will iterate from 0 to uh, 3, right? So, what is happening here? If the array at 0th position, so it will start from 0, is greater than the first position. Yes, this is true. Then we are going to swap this, right? So, after the first pass, so after the first pass, when i equals to 0, what I will get this array? I will get this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because this is the only element. And we are going to swap with every other element. So after the first iteration, we will get this particular array, right? Now see here what will happen. In the second iteration, if we go for an outer for loop, the value of i will be 1 here, right? Now here the now here in the inner for loop for j in the range 0, comma n minus i, that is i is 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, 5 minus 2 is basically 3, 0, comma 3. So it will iterate from 0 to 2. Now, what is happening here? When the value of j is 0, right? When the value of j is 0, so 0th element position is 1, right? 1. And the 0 plus 1 is first position, first position is 2. Now, this particular condition is false here, right? If this particular condition is false, then we, we are not going to swap. We'll go for a next iteration from the inner loop, right? Now, here the value of j is 1. Again, same thing. This particular condition is not getting true because this list is already sorted, right? This condition will never will become true after this particular first pass because the list is already sorted. But still we are checking here when the value of j is 0, when the value of j is 1, when the value of j is 2. This condition is false only. After this, we will go for a next iteration when the value of i is 2. When the value of i is 2, in this case also this particular condition will be checked and every time this is false. right? So what is happening here? Even if this particular list is sorted, this algorithm is keep doing the same thing, right? Even we got this particular uh, list sorted in the first pass, this particular algorithm is going for a uh, next iteration till this particular uh, iteration will stop, right? So even we got the sorted array in the first iteration itself, we are still checking for other iteration, right? Same thing for when i equals to 1, when i equals to 2 like this, right? So what will happen in this case? This is not efficient code, right? Because even if I got this particular array sorted, but if you are still, but if my code is still checking for this condition again and again, even if the list is sorted, it means that this code is not efficient. So how we can make this code efficient or we can say optimize? 
let's discuss that now so this is not optimized code this will give the same output now let us discuss the optimized code one because what we want okay once we found that if there are no swapping is required because the list is already sorted we need to stop the algorithm right this is what we want to do but this is not happening here because we we'll keep iterating towards for all the iteration when the value of i is 0 1 2 3 like that right now what will be the optimized code for this particular case now here you can see optimized bubble algorithm what we are doing same thing is here also so what we are doing same thing is here also but only we have added one variable that is swap equals to false so we have initialized this variable swap equals to false we are making it true only when we are doing the swapping right now if you observe for this particular case after the first pass what we got after the first pass what we got sorted list 1 2 3 4 5 in the second iteration the in the second iteration when the value of i is 1 in this case what is happening j is start j will start from 0 range 0 to uh, 3 right right so j 0 position greater than first position now this condition is false if this condition is false then go for next iteration the value of i is what one here again this is not true go for next condition again this is not true go for next condition right so after when the value of i is one if after this particular thing is over what is happening here if not swap right already the value of swap was false and this is not got updated here because this particular condition is false every time so this is not got updated so the value of swap variable is false only and not swap is basically true not of false is true so we are breaking this code here so we are stopping the code here right we are stopping the code here i am not going for i equals to 2 or i equals to 3 in the previous case in this case even though my list is sorted but i am still iterating to i equals to true or i i equals to 2 or i equals to 3 right but in this case i am not going to do that because i know there is no further swaps are required it means this list is already sorted so we are going to break the code right so this is optimized code i hope you understand this particular example uh, simple only both are same only but here we have introduced one variable swap to check whether the list is sorted or not or further swap is not required right if no elements were swapped then break the loop that's it so i hope you understand this uh, particular code also now let's try to visualize this particular code now here you can see the same code unoptimized one if i start executing this code see we are calling this function here so we have taken this list as an input and then we have called the function right the value of n is 5 yes that is true and the value of i is 0 for the first iteration then what we are doing value of j is 0 and then we are checking the condition so here you can see line number 9 right we are checking this particular condition if this is true then we are going to set see uh, next line that is basically line number 10 we are going to execute and here you can see it is 64 it is 34 right so if i click on next so you can see the elements are already swapped previously it was 64 34 now already swapped now we are going for the next iteration for the inner for loop only so if i keep doing this so you can see this particular arrow on the left hand side right we are simply checking condition swapping again we are going for next iteration on the left hand side here you can see again we are swapping right so this is how this particular algorithm will work right so this is what will happen after the first pass when the value of i is zero so here you can see the largest element at the last now if i click on next so here you can see fourth uh, line number four will execute it means the value of i will become one now so here you can see the value of i is one now and same thing we are doing here right simply checking and swapping the element so this is what the bubble sort algorithm is now let's try to discuss this code also uh, how we are breaking this code right same thing this code will work similar to the previous code for the first iteration right so i'm simply going fast here now here you can see when we have one extra variable swap that is false right when the value of i is zero it is false only and we are going for next iteration so here you can see on the left hand side we are simply checking and we are swapping the element right okay so i hope you understand this particular a code and how it is working now let's quickly visualize this by using animation also so first what we are doing we are comparing 29 
with 10, 10. So we have taken these two elements, we are comparing and then see we are simply swapping it. That's it, right? Now for the next case, we are comparing these two addition elements. If it is greater, again we are simply swapping it. In the next case, I am comparing this one again. Now in this case, you can see this is because 29 is not greater than 37, right? So in this case, what will happen? In this case, what will happen if I just compare these two elements? I am going to compare next element, right? Because swapping is not taken place here because this element is less than this one, right? So swap will not take place. Now I will compare next two elements, that is 37 and 14. Now here 37 is greater than 14, so I am going to swap it, right? So that's how this particular algorithm is working. So 37 will be at the last for the first pass, right? And now in the second pass, I will compare the remaining unsorted array, right? Elements 10 and 14 already sorted go for next checking 14 29 already there so what about 29 14 now we are going to compare this 29 is greater than 14 so again yeah we are going to swap right so that's it now for the third pass again we need to check 10 and 14 no swapping is required 14 14 no swapping is required right that's it so in this way we have got this sorted uh, list right i hope you understand this particular algorithm that's it from my side. Thank you.